Yeah, YouTubers, Taz Man here, bringing you another episode of Fantasy Grounds Unity from the ground up, Players Edition. So, in our last episode, uh, we kind of went over these guys right here, and basically this little triangle right down there. Um, went through the different options and stuff. Uh, hopefully, you found it useful. One thing I did forget to mention is if we have these expanded and it happens to go lower than our screen will allow us, so things kind of go off screen, you can always come in here and use the mouse wheel <clears throat> to scroll up and down. It will allow you to do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close these ones because we've done them. It helps me keep track of what we have done and haven't done. All right, so the next area, and this is going to be a real quick perusing over the thing because there are way more options and we can go way more in depth on it, and we will, uh, but this is just to get you familiar with the interface. So we're going to go into characters here. Now, characters, obviously, is where we selected our character at the very beginning. There was a little Tazzy here. And this is also where we can create characters, import characters, and stuff like that. So first thing we want to look at, there's this character wizard button. And this will walk you through steps of creating a character. I will show you it, but we're not actually going to do anything in there. So it'll pop up like this, uh, where you create your stats, race, class, background. Uh, once you're done, you click commit and you're done. Uh, we will be going over this in greater detail in the future, but it is outside the scope of this video. Next thing we have is this little plus down here for adding items. We also have this little up arrow for importing items. If we click import, we'll see that now we're in the import character screen. If your GM, if by chance you had an XML file of an export of a character that you wanted to use and you sent it to your, to your GM and they brought it in, you would be able to have that character show up here. You would click them and then click import. Uh, because we don't actually have one, we don't have anything here. The other option right here is this little plus, and this is just to add a character. This is basically like picking up a Dungeons and Dragons worksheet or the character sheet and filling it out. This is closer to going on D&D Beyond and filling out your character. So if we click on this, what we'll do is we will get a blank character and you'll actually see that it's automatically assigning it to me because I'm the one creating it. Uh, so this is what our character sheet looks like. We have a sidebar here with all our different tabs. Uh, we have our main tab, our skills tab. We have an abilities tab for all our abilities, features, traits, proficiencies, languages, all that. Inventory for our money and for our items we're carrying. We have a notes tab for our general notes and even a notes tab thing right there. We have a log tab for, uh, this is generally used if you're in adventure leagues. Uh, that's why it has the DCI number. Uh, but you don't have to use it for that. You can actually add other notes just by clicking on the plus button here. And just so you know, anytime you see this little plus button, that means you can add something. Uh, then we could add our note here and say note, right? Uh, if I click on this, we'll actually get more information that we can attach to this. This is more for your adventure leagues, the session number, date, the GM name and DCI number, you know, just to keep track of all that stuff. <clears throat> we'll also notice that there's this little plus minus down here. And anytime you see this, this means you can edit the selection that is on the page. It might be inside a window. You might actually see multiple of these or it might just be at the bottom, in this case, like this. If we click it, it will turn red, and now we'll actually see little red things appear uh, where we can actually choose to delete an item. So this note that we just created, we can click it once, and we talked about this a tiny bit, where you can actually delete. And then if you didn't want to delete, you're like, oh no, I didn't want to do that. Just ignore it. You could click off and then back on, and it resets it. But if you click it a second time, that is confirming, yes, I do want to delete it, and it is gone. Gone forever at that. 
Uh, then we finally have our actions. This is where our weapons, our spells, and such will all be. Uh, in here we have different items here. We actually have one for adding weapons. We have one for adding powers. So this part up here never really ever left our, our view. It was there the whole time. This just keeps track of our character's name, our portrait, our token. And if we want to talk in this active PC's voice, for example, let's just call this Fred. If we want to talk as Fred, as a player, the GM actually has a drop down right here. But if I wanted to say I'm talking as Fred and not as Tazzy, I can click this little speech bubble. Actually, that doesn't work on players. I learned a lot. So the last time I did this tutorial, I actually didn't do it as a player. I used a second instance of Fantasy Grounds logged in with my admin account and it actually gave me a lot more options. So this is very, very uh, good for me to know that as a free player, no, this is not available. I don't know, you can't drag it, can you? So uh, yeah, I guess players can't do that. I know GMs can actually click on that and it's the same thing as doing the drop down and saying, I wanna talk as this player. So, um, I believe you might still be, let's see if this works. Cause I think if you select it where, see our dice is black now and we select that one, our dice is blue. I think it will do it this way though. So let's say, hey there. And you'll see this is from Fred. If I click on this one and say, hey there, you'll see that this one's from Tazzy. So you're still able to do it. It's kind of goofy that they don't let you do it this way unless let's let's watch because right now we're on tazzy with this one if i click this does it change the focus it did actually so it kind of did do it i was just expecting it to pop up a little thing here that said fred uh like it does when you do the gm so it, it is kind of working still because we can do that and it actually says fred if we do that uh if we do that one now it will say it's from Tazzy. So, okay. That is good to know. And now you guys know it too. Uh, also, uh, in the options, the GM actually has the option of giving up to three inspiration points. When you have inspiration, it will put a star right here. And I don't know if it gives you two stars. Oh, it does say two and then three if you have more inspirations. For those who don't know what inspiration is, basically... In a nutshell, it lets you re-roll a d20 roll. <clears throat> Man, my throat's itchy. Hold on a sec. So I think that kind of covers what I wanted to cover with characters. That's where we access our character lists and our characters uh, that we can select. If I right-click on this guy and say I want to release it, I don't want to be the owner of that character. If I come back in here now, you'll see that that is owned by the server and it is available to click. If I click it, I own it, right? The GM also has this ability to do that. Um, we already talked about it, okay. So that is basically your character. Uh, the next one down is notes. With notes, we can create notes. Hmm, pretty obvious, right? Uh, so, we can actually come in here, click add item, and you'll see now we have a new note. We can give this note a name. Uh, let's say, uh, this is Tazzy, T4ZZIE uh, note, maybe notes, like that. Owner is T Derby, which is the player name. Now you have the option of making it public or private. Private is the default. Public would mean other players are actually able to see it. Uh, and then I can also lock the note so it can't be edited. If I come in here and click, I can start typing stuff. And I have some very basic options that I can do. If I right click, I get this little paragraph logo or symbol. And in there I can do body text, I can do a heading, I can do a chat frame type of thing so that it, it will post to the chat when we do it. We can do a list. We can do a link and we can do a table. So 
let's say the default is body text. So if we come in here and say, uh, this is B O D Y T E X T, something like that, hit enter maybe twice. And then let's go change it uh, to a heading, A T A D I N G. So we get a nice little red thing there. Go here, change it again uh, to a chat frame and say this is to output to the chat window the chat window like that if i hit enter on that get out so now if i'm in here and it's even if it's locked if i click on this it will automatically output it to the chat window for everyone to see so i could have little notes in here that maybe i want to send out to the players or something uh, my fellow players, mostly this is for GMs when they have chat that they want to send out. Uh, let's go ahead and unlock it. I think we kind of understand what a list is, you know, bolted list. We know what links are. Uh, basically, these are links. If we click on link, it just gives us an option of dragging. I probably can't do that. Drag maybe that on there and say T for Z Z I E. Uh, C H A R S H E E T. And now, if I click on that, boom, character sheet opens. Beautiful, right? And then the last one was a table where we can actually kind of have a table. Those are your options. Like I said, you can make it private. If you make it public, a little, a little, uh, oh, whoops, I need to unlock it. A little P will open up here saying that it's public. So you can instantly see when things are public. Um, I believe also, uh, if I do not have it marked as public, other players don't even see this. GM can see it, but other players do not. So that is our notes. Now the campaign stuff, we're gonna kind of cruise through because a lot of it generally you will not have any access to, such as encounters. Uh, the, GM, the GM's not gonna want you to know all their encounters they have. They're not gonna necessarily have all images but ones that they share with you maps or other images they will be in here where you can actually look them up um, items is definitely one that you will be able to access this is all items in the game so we in our previous episode two episodes ago or something we had our character and we were going to try and do a hit and use the uh, critical thing that was over here but i didn't have anything equipped so if i come in here and i do a let's see this is a i don't remember i think it's a cleric so let's do a warhammer or something so if we come down here in the search do war hit enter we can simply take this little shield or this little eye drag it in here and now we have a warhammer um we can choose you know, is it melee? Is it a uh, ranged weapon? Is it a thrown weapon? Uh, generally, these things are auto set. This is more if you're creating your own weapon, uh, then you would set these things. You know, is it in our primary hand? Is it a two handed weapon where we're using it with two hands? You'll notice also it automatically does versatile if versatile is an option. Uh, or is it offhand, which means it doesn't usually use the modifier on the damage. So if we go back to one hand, if we were to say roll this by double clicking. Oh, whoops, we're still in manual mode. <laughs> we got to go turn that off. I, I thought I turned that off. Uh, manual entry. There we go. Off. Uh, so if I double click this, you'll see that it's rolling the D8 and do 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 actually we don't have a modifier so it's not going to show it because we have a zero i believe on our strength but if we didn't let's say we had an 18 on strength because we can uh if we come in here now you'll see it says d8 plus four so usually when you do that so you'll see that was six if we do this as an offhand weapon usually you don't get your modifier on an offhand weapon so you'll see it's just five so that's a little extra that we didn't need to go into, but I thought it was uh, kind of good to go into. So we did anyway. All right, so back 
to our items here. We also have armor, so it we can type in an armor. Let's say we want studded leather here, S-T-U-D. We can actually find our studded leather in here, but we can also get it in here and simply drag and drop is all we have to do. But this will actually show all our different armors all at once. Uh, one second. Um, and then of course it will do the same thing with weapons. This will give you <clears throat> upfront a little additional information saying, you know, how much they cost, the damage, uh, properties on it, the weight, and the item. You can always click on the eye to get more information if there is more information. Sometimes there's a little other tab on there so you can actually see more. Um, so that is kind of our items. Uh, it's also good to note that down here where we had our search, we have uh, some options here. We have filtered by shared stuff or all stuff. So if, if you have specific things that are being shared with you, you can just sort by that. Uh, if we delete this and then hit enter to clear it. Uh, we also can do a search, is it an attuned item? We have a yes, no type of thing. Uh, so if it's a no, we just select that. Rarities, we can choose the uh, rarity if it has a rarity type we can also choose that as adventuring gear sort these are basically filters to tell us those things I forgot to close that one <clears throat> and you can see we actually have six pages of items that comes with the SRD uh, next is NPCs only thing you might see in here is if you're a wild shaped druid it might actually have the type of creatures that you're able to uh, wild shape into other than that i don't know a gm that would actually put all the monster manual in here because then you once again have the issue with metagaming where someone might come in here and go oh skeletons this is their ac this is their health this is what they're immune to this is their vulnerabilities and use that to their advantage and kind of ruin the game. Once again, we have some filter options. We can sort by CR. Uh, we don't have any showing because we we don't actually have any characters we can see. And then of course type, you know, whether they're abominations, humanoid, so on and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. Parcels, probably also not something you're gonna see a lot of. Uh, these are kind of like uh, what you get for loot, for looting uh, uh, from encounters and such. We have quests. Sometimes your GM might give you this or at least make certain quests available to you just so you have the, the verbiage as to what they are and what they do. Um, so you might have access to that. Story, once again, probably something you're not going to have any real access to because spoilers right <laughs> and then finally we have tables this one you will have some access to some of the stuff uh, for example stuff from the SRD we can see that we have the table for rolling our acolytes bonds flaws ideals and personality traits um, we have a confused behavior table here uh, you know and so on and so forth Sometimes there will be a wild magic table if it's enabled or a uh, crit fell table, you know, if that's what they use. Teleport mishaps, things that might happen if you teleport and doesn't work right. You can see a lot of stuff here. <laughs> I don't understand this to tell you the truth. On target, a mishap happens. You go to a similar area, I guess. So anyway, that's that's the campaign. And the final area is for making a character. In fact, let's go ahead and just show you how quickly and easily you can make a base character. Let's bring Fred back up. So what we can do, obviously, we only have one background. So we'll give Fred the Acolyte background. And all we have to do is simply take it and drag it onto this front sheet that actually has the background area and you'll see it automatically adds it in there. You'll also see that it says that it adds the shelter of the faithful, it adds insight and religion, 
and we get the two choices for our language. So if we come in here, we see Shelter of the Faithful, two choices for languages, and there's the insight and religion. So it's doing all that automatic for us. Uh, if we go into our classes now, and we come into here, and let's say we're going to be a, let's be a ranger. I mean, we're not necessarily specced out for a ranger, but who cares? Uh, so we can drag that ranger, I didn't grab it. Drag that ranger into here, and that will add us as ranger one. This is because you can multi-class. If we drag a second thing in here, it would actually say ranger two. If we dragged a, another ranger in, or if we dragged a cleric, it would say ranger one, cleric one. And it will automatically give us the stuff we need. So you can see it at our saving throws. Uh, it added our uh, different features. It added our proficiencies and it, it set up our hit dice. So now it knows that we get a 1d10 hit die and uh, so on and so forth. So if we click on skills now, so we don't click the same skills that we already have. Obviously, we don't want religion or insight. So we wouldn't want that one. But as a ranger, maybe in that one and that one, and it says we get three. So maybe let's do nature. Actually, no, let's do stealth. So we can do that, and boom, there we go. Gives us our skills and everything there. Uh, next thing down will be our feats. Generally, unless you're human variant, you don't get a feat up front, but hey, we're nice. Let's give us a feat. This will automatically go here and add, oh, actually, no, we add the feet here, I forgot. We add our feet on the feet page, and there we go. There's our feet, and it talks about how it's been added. Uh, finally, we have our races, skills, and spells, and, of course, items. So we come back in here. Let's be, let's see, so we're a ranger. Uh, let's be, what should we be? be a tiefling tiefling there we go so now it automatically added 60 foot dark vision it added any other things that we need intelligence was adjusted charisma has been adjusted to get the ability score improvements uh, we got dark vision we got some more abilities added for our racial traits we got hellish resistance and infernal uh, legacy so that's that and then we have our skill, well, skills, this is if, if you were given other skills. These are just the base ones that are already there. So you'll never need that. But spells, as a ranger, yeah, let's give us Goodberry, right? So we can come in here and do G-O-D. I don't know if we get Goodberry this early. But let's go ahead and give us Goodberry, level one spell, right? So we can add our spells in here. We can... Uh, <clears throat> add our weapons obviously as a ranger we're also going to have a bow so come into your uh, not images to items the other images i guess uh and let's give us a maybe longbow l-o-g login longbow right so here's our bow uh we get 20 arrows so let's do a-r-r and there's a 20 arrows right there and you'll see whoops actually this goes into inventory now we needed to put those into inventory we didn't want the longbow there the reason is because we have the option of unequipping it so if i go delete this guy which is why we have that guy right there so we can go ahead and do that turn that back off if we go into inventory and we add our arrows you'll see it adds the arrow. oh it did actually add the longbow we click equipped did it re-add it no because i'm bad i didn't need to delete it i just didn't see it there longbow login why do i really want a login bow okay let's do that and this might now say we have two of them yes all right let's go ahead and delete this one Let's just pretend like we didn't do the longbow yet. Okay, here we go. So we can do the longbow now. Boom, like so. And that should now add it here. There we go. All right, so inventory. Uh, let's see. 
we might also get an explorers pack now i'm not 100 percent sure if it is only in the players uh players handbook one that it will actually unpack the explorers pack for you so if we do e x p o o and we do explorers pack let's see if this says explorers pack or if it unpacks it oh it unpacked it beautiful so there you go now we have all that we have the ability cast good berry um so we have a spell we have that so i think that's all good i think that kind of covers what we want uh also i believe our background uh might give us like 20 gold or something maybe 10 or 15 i think is usually it so we can come in here and do 15 gold and there we go um I guess that's if you want to have gems and stuff. I don't know. Uh, so you can do that. Uh, and then you'll notice here it's actually keeping track of all our weights and stuff uh, and telling us what our current weight is. This is our maximum we can carry. We're going to have some big penalties if we uh, get to 300. We're going to have issues with lifting, pushing, and dragging. Um, and uh, I think that is good for this video. We're at 26 minutes, so I'm pretty happy so I think uh, that pretty much covers the whole interface, right? We did spells, we did items, I think so. So with all that, you should be kind of ready to uh, get in and understand the interface. Our next steps will be more on creating a character because that's definitely key and uh, actually playing. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. And don't forget to tell other people about my channel. Come check it out. If they like what they see, they can sub. You know, we grow the channel. It's a win-win situation. You guys get great content, or I hope it's great. And I get subs and more motivation and stuff to actually keep making videos so uh yeah that's it my friends until next time i'll be seeing you later bye